Chemistry 2.4, the ever-changing Earth. This question then was looking at a graph, looking at the total sulfur dioxide emissions between 1970 and 2012. And as you can see, it's definitely at a decreasing rate, most probably quite steady at its decreasing rate, though if you were to draw a line of best fit through that, quite a straight, steady line. Uh, use the graph to calculate the decrease in sulfur dioxide emissions in tonnes between 1994 and 2004. So what I did, and you can see I've drawn up the lines, so I did 1994, each of them little squares equals 1. 1994, it's 3 times 10 tonnes. And then at 2004 again, each little square equals 4. It is 1 tonne, took them away from each other, so that would be 2 times 10 to the 6 tonnes. Quite a nice, easy question to get you started just reading data off a graph. Then it says, show the, suggest and explain a possible reason for the trend shown in the graph. So, sulfur scrubbing um, and also using less coal, greater use of um, alternative energy. Every time you use coal, it releases a little bit of sulfur, which reacts the oxygen in the air, causing sulfur dioxide to be formed. Balance the symbol equation, um, balance the symbol equation below, which shows a reaction which can lead to the formation of sulfuric acid in the atmosphere. So there's sulfur dioxide plus water plus oxygen and can form sulfuric acid, which again is really harmful to the environment. Um, as you can see, I did what you do first is I looked at worked out what each element, the amount of each element on the one side and on the other side is. As you can see, then in green pen, I thought I might be able to times by five, which didn't work out. So then I times by two, and that actually worked out. So they were all even. So even you can see from me that you've got to be making trial and error before you actually get the correct answer. Moving on to part B of this question then, so that was looking at what might happen to the pH of limestone as the um, pH of limestone when it reacts with acid rain, sorry. So name the type of reaction. So limestone is an alkali, um, acid rain is obviously an acid, so that's a neutralization reaction as you can see. The pH is increasing, it's neutralising each other. Hopefully at the end it goes up to pH 7, forming water. Limestone affects the acidity of rain. Describe how the graph supports this statement. The longer a reaction is given to take place, the less acidic the acid rain becomes. Like I was saying, it's starting to neutralise. Apart from destroying limestone buildings, statues given if a problem associated with acid rain, water and ponds affect on marine, uh, marine plants and animals. This could actually be the start of a eutrophication question, so that's linking in your biology knowledge to chemistry. Question then number two was looking at satellite image of Arctic seas. The shrinking of the ice caps is interpreted by environmental groups as a result of global warming. State and explain the main cause of global warming. So global warming is essentially the overburning of fossil fuels, um, coal, gas, um, and it results in large amounts of CO2 emissions. So when they are burned to power our electricity, to power our cars, they release CO2. These CO2 emissions get caught up in the ozone layer and heat up the atmosphere. So they essentially get caught, they cannot escape, and they heat up the atmosphere. Um, the atmosphere is said to heat up by about 0 0.1 Celsius every year. Give one cause the rejection of Arctic ice, Arctic animals lose habitat. So if this ice isn't here, um, animals such as polar bears, penguins, will no longer have a habitat to live on, and they essentially can't live in the sea all year round. The scientists are currently developing a process called carbon capture and storage to reduce the problem of global warming. Then it goes on to explain the three main steps of carbon capture and storage. So you trap the carbon dioxide and separate it from other gases when you are in the electrical plant, so before it gets moved on. Uh, the capture of carbon is then transmitted to a storage location and finally stored far away from the atmosphere, either underground or deep in the sea. Suggest... Using the information, suggest two other reasons why scientists do not support the use of CCS. It still has to be transported, which will produce CO2. And the other thing is storage underground, which again is really bad for the habitat of species that live well underground or near the underground, or wherever you're going to dig that hole to store it. Suggest how burning coal results in the production of sulfur dioxide and why this leads to environmental problems when released into the atmosphere. Include one example of resulting environmental damage. Coal contains sulfur impurities. Sulfur dioxide dissolves with rainwater to produce acid rain. Acid rain kills fish and erodes limestone. So that's like quite a brief overview there, which could get you three marks. 
Moving down the page then, looking at a graph. So the one side is showing the amount of coal burned. So that's going up here. So how many tonnes of coal are burned over a period of so like 30 odd years? And then it's looking at the amount of sulphur dioxide emission. So as you can see, sulphur dioxide is slightly decreasing. State why the data shows the graph, data in this graph is not to be expected. So as the amount of coal burn increases, the number of sulphur dioxide emissions decreasing. One is in, at an increasing rate, the other is at a decreasing rate. What you would expect to see is coal burning going increasing and so should the sulphur dioxide emissions be um, increasing also because we talked about burning coal releases sulphur impurities in the first question. Suggest a possible reason for this unexpected data. Burning coal isn't the only place that sulphur dioxide is produced, so burning coal cannot be directly linked to the amount of sulphur dioxide emissions. Question number four, then. Describe how the composition of atmosphere is affected by... And then the first one is photosynthesis. So lowers the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and increases the amount of oxygen. You could have written there um, the equation for photosynthesis, again, showing the link between biology and chemistry. Respiration, increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and decreases the amount of oxygen. Again, you could have written an equation by there. 4,000 billion years ago, the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was about 40%, whereas the present atmosphere is only 0.03%. Give one reason why the percentage of uh, carbon dioxide has decreased over time. The main reason, which you've learned about when we looked at the evolution of the atmosphere, is the growth of trees. So trees photosynthesize. Um, taking carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So there's less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Then finally was a six mark question. So explain how the natural processes of carbon dioxide and oxygen content in the atmosphere, approximately content. Discuss how human activities are changing the balance between these gases. So photosynthesis is the main way that we take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen and I've done the equation there and then I've put decreases carbon dioxide levels and increases oxygen levels. Then respiration essentially is the other way around so I've written out the equation these are your products here what's formed these are what are taken in so it decreases oxygen levels because we breathe in oxygen and use it then to respire and carbon dioxide is given out as a byproduct. The, the What you actually want in respiration is energy. Now if these two were just happening on their own it would actually be a balance in our activity so carbon dioxide and oxygen would remain constant however which is what i've written at the bottom here human activities such as deforestation limit photosynthesis so that means less carbon dioxide is being taken in and less oxygen is being given out um, the other thing then is combustion so human activity burning fossil fuels releasing more carbon dioxide ruin the balance and cause more co2 in the atmosphere now, actually, before I started this question, I did one of them ticks things again. So I looked at the topic, what it was asking me about, how many marks, again, six, bullet point it through. So I could have most probably got four marks just for doing these two bits here, talking about photosynthesis, respiration, and then another two marks down here for talking about human activity. Um, command words, so explain, that means you need to... Back it up with science, keywords, so I've got carbon dioxide, oxygen, respiration, conduction, con combustion, sorry, and then a sentence start. So I did all of that down here in the pink pen before I even started answering the question. You need to be um, encouraged to do this so that you make less mistakes up here and more likely to get six marks.